good afternoon everyone so this topic of this session is uh, competency based medical education which is getting momentum across the globe nowadays and uh, also it is need of the hour and hence it was developed by mci now national medical commission nmc to meet the global standards for indian medical graduate aim of uh, cbme teaching is to train graduates efficiently to take care of health needs of the society implementation of cbme is a challenging task and uh, we microbiologists are not new to take up challenges last year we had a challenge of setting up rt pcr laboratory across the country initially everyone was apprehensive but ultimately succeeded as of today we are experts in rt pcr testing of covid 19 so similarly as of today we are novice in cbme teaching but will definitely succeed in coming years and will become experts with these uh, with uh, cbme teaching and uh, with these words let's start the topic new era in teaching of microbiology this is a new era in teaching of microbiology because we are shifting from traditional teaching system to a new teaching system that is comp competency based medical education which is outcome based so there are two, two questions one is cbme competency based medical education another is implementation of cbme cbme is a small question but implementation of cbme is a very big question so if we understand cbme in a simpler way then probably implementation of cbme will also be easy to adopt so first i will be dealing about cbme what is cbme and then next implementation of cbme so what is competency based medical education cbme this is the definition of cbme by nmc competency based learning would include designing and implementing medical education curriculum that focuses on the desired and observable ability in real life situation so this is real life situation how to design and implement medical education curriculum which is outcome based it's a observable desirable and observable that is ability that is the outcome based and in this we have to achieve that outcome there are some terminologies which are very important to understand in cbme curriculum one is competency another is competent and then competence these are the definitions of competency competent and competence what is competency according to definition an observable ability of a health professional integrating multiple components such as knowledge skills values and attitudes then what is competent so in competency we have knowledge skills values and attitudes competent is possessing of all these uh, all these like objectives like knowledge skills values and atti attitudes and competence is uh, when you have all these components of competency to apply these abilities in the clinical environment to achieve optimal results so these were the three important terminology but these were according to definitions to simplify in day to day language what are these 
competencies uh, uh, is the things or thing they need to do what is to be done that is competency competent is can do all of the things all things which are there in competency can be done that is competent and competence is does all of the things consistently adopting to contextual and situational needs then to have a one example to understand more easily about competency competent and competence suppose someone wants to drive a car so in driving a car what is competency competency is that person should able to should be able to accelerate and brake smoothly should be able to approach an intersection and can turn left or right that is competency so he knows that these should be there competent is now he knows all these actions but passes the driver's education classes and get the driving driving license so that is competent now he has become competent with the driving license so competence is drive safely from one state to another or during bad weather avoids accidents there are no traffic chances and his father now has become so confident of the son because he he has got the competence so father gives the keys of the car to the son and walks away so that is competence so similarly in cbme also one competency is there then becomes competent because he has passed the examinations and everything and then competence that applying in the clinical setup so competence has come so so what are the differences between traditional and cbme teaching traditional teaching we have been doing for so many years and cbme teaching is a new one traditional teaching was teacher driven and cbme teacher teaching is a learner driven traditional teaching is focused on content and summative assessment summative assessment is examinations but cbme teaching is focusing on skills and on formative assessment formative assessment is new addition to that this teaching in traditional teaching formative assessment is done when you are teaching some subject some topic in that formative assessment is done this is for the feedback if you find that student is not achieving those skills then you should give feedback and for improvement and this cbme teaching begins with identified outcomes outcomes are there and those outcomes are to be achieved by the learner if outcomes are not achieved then you have to give feedback and then improvement should be there until outcome is achieved you have to continue so cbme curriculum in microbiology there are eight main topics containing 20 54 competencies these 54 competencies contain theory competencies practical competencies and another new addition to cbme curriculum is Uh, tradition which was not there in traditional curriculum is atcom i will be coming to that atcom so atcom competencies are also there topic wise there is distribution of number of competencies in general microbiology and immunology there are 11 competencies five in general microbiology and six in immunology then cardiovascular system and blood seven competencies are there gastrointestinal and hepatobiliary system eight competencies musculoskeletal system skin and soft tissue infections three competencies then central nervous system infections three competencies respiratory tract infections three competencies genito urinary and sexually transmitted infections three competencies and then zoonotic diseases and miscellaneous 16 competencies then this these are the some examples of competencies there are 54 given in nmc curriculum manual 
these are some of the competencies first number is written mi microbiology 1.3 describe the epidemiological basis of common infectious diseases this is competency of general microbiology then 2.6 microbiology is identify the positive agents of malaria and filariasis this is the competency of blood and cvs cvs and blood then components against each competency there are different components are written domains level core teaching learning suggested teaching learning methods suggested assessment methods and integration so i will just describe one by one domains what are domains domains of learning are k s a c k is for knowledge s for skill a for attitude and c for communication knowledge domain is a theoretical so it's a cognitive domain so this k is only for theory purposes knowledge skill is a practical domain and a and c attitude and communication is a domain of atcom ethic atcom is attitude ethical communication module that those are the one new module is there atcom module then level of competencies each domain has level so in we have a knowledge do domain k no domain in which there are k and kh level k is knows kh is knows how under s do domain that is skill domain we have three levels s shows sh shows how and p is performs under supervision or independent so k and kh is theory level and s sh and p are practical levels there may be combinations if i take example of k so k domain may be having k level so k and k or k and kh and similarly s domain skill domain may be combination of s s sh s sh and sp so what are these these levels are k level no level is just students have a theoretical knowledge and he can enumerate or describe and knows how is that he can or she can able to discuss or analyze that he knows how so you have a theoretical knowledge you are not doing practical but you know how to able to discuss or analyze and shows is a skill attribute that is practical to identify some uh, material or to demonstrate the steps and shows how is to able to interpret or demonstrate a complex procedure like if it's a gram staining so in gram staining he should able to interpret whether gram positive gram negative he should able to demonstrate it so knowledge should be there for demonstration thought should be there to interpret so all these are shows how and perform perform is a higher level so shows was the lowest level then a higher level shows how and the highest level is perform so if he is performing gram staining under supervision then it's a p level under supervision if he is doing independent then it's a it's a, a p p level independent so p when p is written in a competency means that independent should be done in in for independent is he doing any skill there is a pre specified number of times are given in the competency that for that particular number of times that person should do that skill under supervision then he gets the certification certification means that capacity to perform independently so like in microbiology we have gram staining gene nielsen staining and stool examination is a p level p level mean independent he should do it and for this he has to perform five times under supervision and other competency which is of p level independent is ppe personal protective equipment and hand hygiene three times each should be done under supervision to become a uh, to have a certification 
and to perform independently. Then this is the Miller's pyramid, which shows the levels. So knows is the lowest level and does is the highest level. Knows, knows how, shows how and does. Does contains P, perform. That is the highest level. It may be perform under supervision or under uh, or without supervision, that is independently. Then level comes that, uh, then after level, then core comes, that component of competency is core competency. A core competence, competency means must know. And non-core competency means desirable to know. So core competency is must to complete the requirement of the subject. And non-core competency is optional, desirable to know. But in microbiology, all competencies are core competencies. There is no non-core competency. And except in ATCOM module, they have given some non-core competencies also. Then definitions of few teaching learning method. Next component is written in the each competency, learning method, teaching learning methods. So they, they have described three teaching learning methods, lecture, small group discussions, and DOAP. DOAP is demonstration, observation, assistance, and performance. These two, small group discussion and DOAP, are new addition in the teaching. Traditional teaching was a lecture. So lecture is a big, large group. So traditional lecture, like traditional lecture, maybe interactive lecture. So that, that, that is like a traditional lecture, large group. And small group discussion is that a small group of students uh, are taught some topic. So that is small group discussion. And DOAP contains the four uh, portions, that is demonstration. Uh, this is a practical. Uh, lecture and small group discussion are theoretical and DOAP is a practical. In this, teacher has to first demonstrate the skill and students will observe, observation will be there. Then student should able to assist the performer and then perform in a uh, under supervision or perform independently. For under supervision, if independent, that performance is to be um, there, then it should be certified. Certification should be there. The next component of any competency is assessment methods. Four assessment methods are given. One is written assessment, that is theoretical, viva voce, skill assessment is a practical assessment, then objective examination, OSPI, that is objective structured practical examination. Previously in traditional teaching, we have viva voce marks was added to the theory paper, but here viva voce marks will be added to practical examination. Then next comes alignment and integration in each competency. Alignment is when at the same phase time frame, same time frame, the two different or three different subjects are teaching the same topic or organ system or disease, same time. For example, if microbiology is teaching tuberculosis, then pathology is also teaching on the, in those days, tuberculosis. And pharma, uh, pathology is also teaching tuberculosis and pharmacology is also teaching anti-tubercular drugs. So this is named as a temporal coordination, temporal coordination. So this may be on the same day or this may be on the same week. So idea is to same time frame, same time frame. And then in, 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 integration, Integration concept is that a similar topic are integrated with other, uh, other subjects. So it may be horizontal integration or it may be vertical integration. Horizontal integration means that it should be in the same phase. Same phase means that like we have in this phase, microbiology subject, pathology, pharmacology. So this is a horizontal integration if we are integrating with pathology or pharmacology. Vertical integration is with the higher phase or other phase. 
like we are integrating microbiology integrating with a medicine surgery or pediatrics or other clinical subjects so that is vertical integration and then zincar zincar is you are teaching your own subject but linking with other subjects with a zincar it may be a clinical case based so if you have a clinical presentation and uh, clinical presentation will be linking with other subjects like if you are have a tuberculosis um, uh, clinical case so you are teaching microbiology then you are also linking some aspects of pathology and anti tuberculosis drugs also are taught so that is linking other subjects also in the same this diagram shows temporal coordination that is alignment sharing correlation nesting nmc says that alignment should be done in most of the cases and this integration that is sharing correlation and nesting should not be done more uh, more than 20% of the curriculum this is by the professor harden this there is harden uh, ladder is there and lowest ladder in lowest portion in the ladder is a isolation isolation means everyone is teaching their own subject that was a traditional teaching when you go up so it comes awareness and then comes the alignment and sharing correlation nesting so sharing means that uh, two two su subjects are teaching the their the similar related topic at the same time sharing may be that you are teaching some subject like some topic like tuberculosis then then pathology person will also come and teach the pathology aspects of tuberculosis that is sharing but this integration is said to be subject oriented not teacher oriented this integration should never be that so many teachers should be there even microbiology person can also sh share the subject of pathology the so sharing is subject oriented and only subject demarcation is not there so this is the correlation is main subject here will be your own subject like green is there green subject is there so with the linker you are attaching with a case presentation you are linking all other four subjects also in your own lecture and then nesting nesting is that you are uh, speaking some skills of higher or other clinical subject also in your um, uh, your topic but this nmc says that alignment is the most to be recommended and also i think that alignment is easy to adopt and and nmc says if you want to do integration it should not go beyond correlation not up to nesting then new module has come up atcom attitude ethics ethics and communication module atcom this is a soft skills soft skills and eight atcom modules are there and 37 hours are allotted to this and this is not subject based this is phase based module so eight atcom modules in uh, and 37 hours are in this phase so it means that these are for all the three subjects pathology microbiology and pharmacology these eight atcom modules will be done together in the three subjects here also you can do integration with the clinical subjects because most of the modules which are given have a clinical based so clinical people should also be involved so integration with other subjects should be there and uh, this is basically involves in the uh, with the attitude of the medical personnel like autonomy of the patient autonomy mean that patient should have a decision should independently take decision about anything and then beneficence or non maleficence which means that we should not do any harm to harm to the patient but good to the patient always good to the patient 
and justice should be there with the patient and uh, and this the module says that first contact this physician of first contact should be there because with the community that physician is of first contact and in basically by atcom module they are saying that knowledge skills are not enough so along with knowledge and skill you should have attitude values and responsiveness values this is the base based on values not on the valuables knowledge and skills are valuables but uh, values are more than the valuables and holistic care this shows that it's a holistic care this is not that you have a knowledge and skills that's enough it's a soft skills should also be applied to the patient to, to, to and it, this is a holistic care and ethically also you should not do any an unethical work and uh, so earlier in traditional teaching atcom was not there but students were adopting atcom unknowingly like they have some role model some teacher is a role model and they are adopting their uh, whatever he is doing they are, they are also doing so that is a traditional atcom but that that was not taught but it was automatically by uh, role modeling and uh, so but now it's a subject wise atcom is to be taught and here 75% of attendance should also be there in atcom and atcom formative assessment is also there and summative assessment is also there for atcom and uh, teaching learning methods for atcoms are com competencies are there problem based learning is there some problem is given and then discussed and competencies two competencies are there in microbiology one is microbiology competency 8.1 one one which says demonstrate respect for patient samples sent to the laboratory for performance of laboratory test in the detection of microbial agents causing infectious diseases it means that patient sample should not be rejected so you should be very careful that you are collecting the specimen proper specimen which is required for, for that particular disease you are collecting in a proper specimen for specimen equipment in proper container then transport is also done properly so that that is it should not be rejected then another is in confidentiality pertaining to patient identity in laboratory results so it should be only given results should be given only to the patient and not it should be uh, informed to the other persons and this is being done for so many years in the hiv laboratory so indian medical graduate this atcom module says that indian medical graduate should be having five qualities clinician leader and member of healthcare team and system and it should be he, he should be communicator lifelong learner and professional these qualities should be there clinician mean that he should understand and provides preventive promotive curative palliative and holistic care with compassion with compassion that is very important and leader should leader quality is that leadership he should able to collect analyze and synthesize and communicate health data appropriately and communicator is that he should communicate properly with patients families colleagues and community and lifelong learner is that he should be improving his skills and knowledge day by day whenever new knowledge uh, has uh, some uh, recent knowledge is there he should acquire that and professional is he should be committed to excellence with ethical ethical he should be empathetic empathetic uh, behavior should be there then he should be responsive and accountable to patients community and profession so these qualities should be there for indian medical graduate then comes the assessment i was talking about summative assessment and formative assessment and third is internal assessment summative assessment is university examination and this is at the end of instruction to check how much the student has learned this was also done in the summative assessment was done in the 
the traditional teaching also formative assessment is new addition and this assessment is during the instructions to find out whether student is achieving that learning achieving that outcome or not so it it is for mainly for the feedback feedback purposes it it is not in grading is not there marks will not be added it in it is not graded graded but marks are not there it will not be added anywhere and then internal assessment is that it should be three examination nmc says that three internal exam examination should be there and uh, it may be formative or summative examination may be there in internal assessment at least three should be done minimum and in internal assessment they say it should be 50% marks should be there together in combined with theory and practical to appear in the university examination or summative assessment but minimum 40% in each theory and practical it means that if any student is having 40% marks in practical so he should have at least 60% in theory to combine it will be 50% and vice versa but if somebody has 80% in theory and 20% in uh, practical he will not be eligible for university you know, examination 40% in individual and com combined 50% should be there and attendance also to uh, for appearing in the university you know, examination attendance should be 75% in the uh, theory and 80% in the practical and also 75% attendance in atcom should also be there then with these cbme we have completed cf what is cbme now big question is implementation of cbme curriculum implementation it have different components like duration now it has become 12 months instead of longer duration it has become shorter 11 months plus 1 1 month for examination so they we have 190 hours of teaching in 190 hours of teaching duration for lectures is 70 hours duration for small group learning is 1 10 hours and self directed learning is 10 hours so some so lectures are traditionally which we used to do and small group learning is that small groups are there small group students are there and then we teach some topic and self directed learning is that you give some topic to the students they will read on their own and then you can discuss you can give the case study to read you can give the seminar or some other so that is only for 10 hours then how to implement cbme curriculum first is that we should restrict to theory and practical curriculum which is there in the nmc because if we start uh, thinking in that terms that we will teach everything we used to teach and new will also be added that will be very very difficult because we have a shorter duration and more to teach so that sh that should be taken care of that restrict to theory and practical curriculum and then specific learning objectives in each competency first you have to make the specific learning objectives because after that topic what objectives should be achieved that he must and by this a teacher will also know what is to be taught and once you have decided specific learning objective and made the specific learning object objectives of each competency then it will be easier to teach and and but, but these these are very important in uh, clinical because now system based and clinical based teaching has come up so clinical infective syndromes these specific learning objectives are very important and because now you have made the clinical specific infective syndrome specific learning objectives but you can't teach clinical syndrome without the basic microbiology basic microbiology lies in the linked organisms so you have to identify which are the organisms important organisms which which are linked to this specific learning objective and then after that specific learning objective you have taught that clinical infective syndrome you have to teach this 
organisms also zinc organisms like for example if you are have a competency of acute rheumatic fever you have taught everything about acute rheumatic fever after making specific learning objectives and now what is zinc organism zinc organism to this acute rheumatic fever is streptococcus pyogenes then you should teach streptococcus pyogenes also then next component comes integration how to integrate integration like integration is that if you are integrating with medicine or pediatrics then that should be this integration is given in nmc curriculum you don't have to make on your own it's written that which competency should be integrated if you want you can in integrate or alignment can be done and you have to decide whether it's written in that uh, competency it's a horizontal integration or a vertical integration then comes the topics in lectures sgd S stl this is to be decided by you which topics should be in lectures which should be taught in sgd and which should be taught in the in the stl this will be that important topic should always be taken in lectures because it will be having a uniformity and less important topics should be in the this small group discussions and other maybe case discussion or seminars can be kept in the self directing directed learning then i have taken some some examples two examples one theory example one practical example how to implement this like competency is 5.1 describe the etiopathogenesis clinical course and discuss the laboratory diagnosis of meningitis domain is k knowledge level is know how knows how so core is all course are yes so core competency suggested teaching learning method is lecture suggested assessment method is written and viva voce and vertical integration with general medicine pediatrics and horizontal integration with pathology so first you have to make specific learning objective what should be the specific learning objective of this competency specific learning objectives should be that what are the etiology etiological agents of meningitis what are different types of meningitis acute pyogenic chronic meningitis viral meningitis then what is the pathogenesis of these what is the clinical course and then laboratory diagnosis of meningitis if you have a vertical integration then clinical part may be in the medicine or pediatrics because two types of uh, vertical two subjects are there in vertical integration because meningitis causes are different in newborn and children and different in adults so and mode of transmissions can also be taught in these clinical subjects like general medicine and pediatrics once you have specific learning objectives then you should teach this whole competency in toto in toto means that you should in that lecture you should teach what are the various etiological agents whether viral bacterial uh, or fungal and you can you should teach if csf has come for diagnosis of meningitis how to deal with all these in the same lecture because this nmc curriculum cbme curriculum is totally um uh, this uh, clinical oriented and um, this is system based so once in a holistic uh, approach one should teach everything in one lecture and then you should identify what are the linked or organisms like in this meningitis you will find the important organisms are like neisseria meningitidis then streptococcus pneumoniae then hemophilus influenzae mycobacterium tuberculosis Uh, so all these should be you have to decide the important organisms like neisseria meningitidis streptococcus pneumoniae should be going to lectures and then if less are important are going to general medicine and pediatrics and uh, horizontal integration should be done in the same times to find out the pathology of meningitis but this take care should be taken because if you are teaching in toto the meningitis you are telling all the etiological agents whether less common or rare but you are teaching only which are common one and the less common are going to small group discussion more common are going to lectures 
so it's not that rare causes should rare causes you have already told that student in this your total in this competency lecture and then you should go for the commonest one and then next competency is 5.3 identify the microbial agents causing meningitis so this is domain is skill practical level is sh show how core competency doap session and suggested assessment method is skill assessment and vertical integration is with general medicine and pediatrics so vertical integration is in the in this clinical subject student may able may be able to uh, know about how to do lumbar puncture how to collect the csf specimen how to transport that csf specimens and uh, then identify microbial agent causing meningitis because it's a show how you can make the smear from csf and stain it and show it to because doap session first you demonstrate the direct microscopy of gram staining if you are thinking in terms of tubercular meningitis so you stain with jeev nielsen staining and demonstrate and then student will observe and uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, a, a, then assist assist and perform perform under supervision can be done so this way you can perform under supervision can be done and you can also show them the growth of uh, some bacteria on the uh, culture plate and then they should know how to correlate clinical history can be given and on that basis of clinical history you may write that uh, um, csf was sent to the laboratory and th this slide has been made from that uh, prepared from that uh, csf and uh, you stain it and comment on this and th this is a plate of uh, having bacteria so 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 how to correlate and find out which type of meningitis probably and what are the important uh, um, tests to confirm it so that way this there are two examples of one practical one theory example then comes the university examination university examination is having three types of questions long answer question short answer questions and multiple choice questions nmc curriculum says cbme curriculum that multiple choice questions should not be more than 20% mean it may be 0% also 0% to 20% and multiple cho cho choice questions doesn't mean only mcqs you may also give in this reasoning questions maybe true or false maybe match the following so all these comes under this heading multiple choice questions then question paper 200 marks is allotted to theory paper two papers are there 100 marks each so paper 1 because it's a system based learning system based teaching so we should divide system wise part a can be having a general microbiology and and immunology and part b may be having cvs and blood and git and hepatobiliary system paper 2 may contain part a musculoskeletal system skin and soft tissue infections central nervous system infections and part b may be having respiratory tract infections genito urinary and sexually transmitted infections then zoonotic diseases and miscellaneous so paper a and uh, paper 1 and paper 2 both have part a and part b in they recommend that long question should be case based so case presentation based so case should be there clinical case then along with the question it may be for 15 marks and five short answer question may be there five marks each 25 marks and 10 multiple choice question reasoning questions match the following or true or false one mark each and similarly same replica in part b and in short answer question at com question can also be put and uh, because i have added 20 mcq in 100 marks because paper 1 is 100 paper 2 is 100 so 20 marks mean 20% we have added uh, one can also change it to 10 mark 10 mcqs questions maybe uh, 10% and may add one or more uh, 
one or two more short answer questions practical paper is having 100 marks including including viva oc so in this you can have gram staining g universal staining stool examination these questions should be case based questions may be there you can give one case presentation and with the clinical history and along with that you can give a slide for staining and then to comment culture plate can also be given along with it so, so culture plate can be described and then ospi ospi can be there so objective questions you can uh, focus some slide and give the objective questions related to that may put some uh, some uh, to uh, some uh, thing to identify and then write the questions related to that then viva oc viva oc may be 20 marks or uh, and uh, or 25 marks and rest maybe with the practical part this is the coordination and uh, you can say correlation integration so many hands are coming together for integration coordination and so this shows thank you this shows that uh, coordination and uh, so much needed change in medical education is here i think let's take it positively and be a part of change so integration is there in this picture and also correlation is there uh, anything so many hands are working to together so now i will be coming to the book published by uh, how we have implemented this uh, cbme implementation in the book so this is complete book on of my, on microbiology by apc books so competency is written on the right side then there are at the bottom you are seeing specific learning objective the dairy and dysentery is there so objective specific learning objectives are there etiological agent causing dairy and dysentery morphology pathogenesis and laboratory diagnosis and then important linked organisms are also given along with the chapter wise chapter which are the chapters so linked organisms so this is the uh, in uh, apc book published by um, uh, published by apc books this complete microbiology how this implementation of cbme has been done in this book so in dairy and dysentery example is there competency is written on the right side then at the bottom specific learning objectives are there etiological agents causing dairy and dysentery then morphology of organisms pathogenesis and laboratory diagnosis and uh, then important linked organisms are there the escherichia coli vibrio coli non typhoidal salmonella shigella so all are written here in the important linked organisms then then this because i was talking about that in toto we should teach so everything is written whether it's a viral whether diarrhea or it's a bacterial diarrhea uh, it's written in, in the laboratory diagnosis and then this is the flow chart how to deal this flow chart chart shows uh, covers all the parameter whether it's a viruses or whether it's a parasitic or it's a uh, bacterial so all the parameters are given in this flow chart if student goes via via this flow chart he can identify any organism then these are the linked organisms a table has been given in which everything required regarding that bacteria is there vibrio coli for example morphology is written gram negative curd or coma shaped bacillus what is the size of this actively motile darting motility what are the culture media used for this how to identify how to diagnose this but this will be sufficient for this in toto teaching but if some wants to, because you have a separate lecture also on vibrio coli because it's a important topic in detail it should be taught so for details referring is written that's go to chapter 48.4 and similarly shri chakulai also everything has been written and for detailed lecture you can go to there 
because it's a linked organism so for linked organism teaching you have to go to the individual chapter this we have given the clinical presentation one and two two clinical presentation are given one for diarrhea one for dysentery in this uh, i have tried to uh, correlate with the clinical subjects also you will find that clinical findings are also there like if dehydration is there there, there are dehydration um, symptoms uh, dehydration are uh, is there that, that is also written how to identify dehydration so then there are questions are there what is provisional clinical diagnosis what are the laboratory tests to confirm the diagnosis and uh, what is the treatment treatment part is also there of the diarrhea then answers are there then discussion is there discussion means how we have reached on this what are the points we are on reaching diagnosis so that that has been discussed and then points to ponder what other points you should learn after this so that is clinical case presentation is very important nowadays in cbme curriculum so another is for uh, dysentery so um, another important aspect of nmc uh, curriculum or cbme curriculum is that you should correlate with your finding with the clinical significance like clinical significance means if generation time we are te teaching generation generation time what is the importance of generation time student should know why we are saying 20 minutes is a generation time and 20 hours in mycobacterium tuberculosis and 20 days in mycobacterium zepri so he will be able to know what is the clinical significance that how much we have to incubate the culture period that is 20 minutes is there then 18 to 24 hours is the incubation period if mycobacterium tuberculosis how, why it takes so long to grow because generation time is 20 hours so why zepri versus zepra versus takes so much time because 20 days is generation time so that should be Uh, clinically one should correlate in all the chapters clinical significance has been given like viable count we say viable count uh, some bacteria uh, is viable count total count why we are teaching viable count so clinical significance here is given that it's important to know viable count uh, in the water bacteriology in coliform count then reference is there in given that chapter and on in uti urinary tract infection also viable count is required so this way clinical significance or another is that we are teaching them uh, that uh, this is diplococci this is in clusters why because for identification that is the clinical significance so everywhere clinical significance has been given so that is important to uh, correlate your basic microbiology with the clinical uh, settings then new chapter uh, new competency has come up like appropriate laboratory test in diagnosis of infectious diseases that is the so specific learning objective is that uh, how we, we we will having a appropriate laboratory test in this it is given that in bacterial diseases all the diseases have been given what is the specimen to be taken and uh, what, what is the uh, laboratory test should be done appropriate laboratory like gonorrhea it's a urethral discharge and gram staining and culture are the uh, laboratory test we should be done in diphtheria it's a throat throat swab and elbow staining and culture are the appropriate test so this has been given in for bacterial diseases then viral diseases also given that what is the specimen specimen and what is the like hepatitis that uh, hepatitis b blood is a specimen what is the test is either test for hbs antigen in serum so that way all the viral viruses uh, viral diseases have been given with the specimen and the very appropriate test for diagnosis so then also because nowadays covid 19 has become very important so severe ac acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 sars cov 2 has also been given in detail the positive agents has has been given then pathogenesis and diagram and uh, other uh, vaccination uh, the vaccination used in india has also been given in detail so what are the tests for laboratory test which are done rt pcr and uh, 
uh, other test that uh, CBNET and uh, other tests, everything and treatment by how to manage uh, COVID-19. So this is these are the vaccination, COVID shield and COVAXIN and what are the trials going on in other future vaccines in India. Then another competency which is new in this curriculum is ethics and confidentiality in laboratory results. So full chapter is there on ethics and confidentiality in laboratory results. In this, it's given rights and responsibility of patients, rights and responsibilities of uh, laboratory persons. So uh, rights, responsibility and ethical issues are also being given. Next. Then new competency is also there in this curriculum, national health program. Full chapter is there involving all the national health programs which are related to microbiology. Then at, at the end of the, uh, the end of the book, there are essentials of microbiology at glance. So it is summarized. Everything has been summarized for whole of the microbiology. Bacteriology tables are there, which summarizes everything, group of the bacteria, then uh, general features of that group, then bacteria, specific bacteria, morphology, culture, diagnosis, uh, diseases produced by that particular bacteria. So these are given for all bacteria, viruses, fungal, and parasite also. So parasitology has also been included in this book. Parasitology full unit is there for parasitology. And in this book, uh, all the competencies are dealt in chapter wise. And uh, from one competency to the last competency, it's chapter wise. And in the unit one to four, all competencies are over. And uh, after unit four, linked organisms are there, viruses, bacteria, and uh, fungi because parasitology comes in the competency. So this is in along with the competence, competency. And this is a content of the book, which shows uh, topic wise topics and then uh, topics are there of uh, each chapter and then competency number is given. And so you can just see in which chapter, which competency is dealt with. This, this is the content of all. A clinical and applied microbiology, there are like cardiovascular system and blood, gastrointestinal. This is going by competency wise from competency one to last. And so these, they are genotic disease and miscellaneous. Then parasitology is separate unit. Unit four is there of all competency. Then zinc dominium comes systemic bacteriology. Then uh, then virology, mycology, and then miscellaneous, that essentials of microbiology at glance. Then another is because competencies are there. So if you see by competency wise, each competency is in which chapters. So if one competency is more than one chapter, it's written there that these are the competencies in more than one chapter. So by competency wise, you can see by this content and by chapter wise, you can see in that content. Uh, thank you very much.